episode 112. This is the business of architecture. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where each week I speak with a successful architect, designer, or consultant to discuss tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. Today's show is sponsored by BQE Software, the makers of ArchiOffice. ArchiOffice is the office and project management software built with the needs of architects in mind. And for a limited time, startup firms can get two free seats of ArchiOffice for a year. Go check it out at ArchiOffice.com. Today, we're joined by the Vice President of Industry Marketing at House, the leading residential remodeling and design platform and community. Today's guest has experience spanning advertising, consulting, marketing, and social strategy for Fortune 500 brands to a host of innovative startups. She co-founded her first internet startup in 1998, a home improvement retailer that was eventually sold to Walmart. If you aren't familiar with House, perhaps you live under a rock because in the past five years, House has taken the residential remodeling and building world by storm. And with that, I'm happy to welcome our incredible guest to the show today, Lisa Hausman. Lisa, welcome to the Business of Architecture. Thanks so much for having me, Enoch. It's great to be here. You bet. So when I when I did that introduction, I was just thinking, I know House has a very strong um, you know, a profile here in the U.S. Are you guys overseas yet? Are you in Australia or any of the other English or speaking countries? Yeah, actually, uh, I was excited to tell you a little bit more about that. Um, I think it's kind of one of the most amazing aspects to house these days. We've we've been global, I think, since the beginning in terms of people using it uh, from every country of the world. Um, but this year, we are now uh, officially in nine countries. Um, we've got Russia, Japan, Italy, Spain, UK, Australia, France, Germany, probably missing one there, uh, in addition to the U.S. and Canada. And so we have local teams there and actually localized sites. Um, And I actually spend a a fair bit of my time poking through all the photos from uh, the south of France and some of my other favorite places. Wow, excellent. So are those those sites on their own domain? Like, can they be found from house.com or are they country-specific? Yes. So, so both actually. The, they have their own domain. So you can go to house.ru or house.fr. Um, and the, actually the easiest way to get there if you're on the house homepage, um, if you scroll down uh, towards the bottom of the page, uh, you'll see a little drop down. It'll say United States and you can just select that and choose the country and it will automatically change the site uh, to whichever country you prefer to be in. Or you can go there directly using the domains. Wow, that's amazing. And how how long have, has Hows been pushing the international presence? It's been less than a year. You know, the English-speaking countries, the UK and Australia, we already had um, a pretty good critical mass there in terms of architects and designers using the site as well as homeowners. Um, but in places like France and Germany, where we really had to localize um, not just the language, and um, but the content. And, and that's really, I think, what's been fascinating about launching in these countries is localizing the content, bringing in the professionals and the projects that are in these local countries, um, creating content and articles that are really relevant uh, and cover the types of home building, remodeling, and decorating projects that are actually happening in those countries. So you can go in and see, for example, architects in Japan and, the, and what they're working on. Have there been any sort of surprises or interesting things that you've seen uh, in these other countries, perhaps differences from how the way things work in the U.S.? Um, Sure, there are definitely plenty of differences. I think one of the interesting things about Japan is that homes are built to only last 30 years. So people get a 30-year mortgage, and when they're done, you kind of get a new house, and everyone expects to start over. Uh, They aren't really built to last hundreds of years the way they are in the U.S. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, And it's changing a little bit as they get more westernized. Uh, And then some of the fun things we've seen in terms of uh, uh, the crossing of of design styles is uh, more U.K. homeowners asking for sort of U.K. Hampton-style kitchens. (laughs) in their homes. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been interesting. So tell me tell me I don't I don't get the UK Hampton style uh, reference. <laughs> ah, so in London now, uh, the homeowners in London are going to their architects and and designers and asking for a Hamptons, you know, a Hamptons New York style kitchen in their London home. Mm. So that style has sort of come come over across the pond. 
And I must be out of the I must be out of the loop. What is a Hamptons? What characterizes a Hampton style kitchen? Um, it's a very traditional kitchen, but uh, kind of large. The white cabinetry, the you know, the kind of contrasting stone island. Um, I think here you probably wouldn't be surprised. It would look like a big traditional New York kitchen, mm-hmm. um, but things tend to be a little bit more modern in Europe, and so I think that's been a bit of a departure to have something a little bit more elaborately traditional. Gotcha. Thanks. I, I'm sure I'm going to get some people who are going to write me and say, come on, Enoch, you don't know what a Hampton style kitchen is. <laughs> I wish I had a picture to hold up and show you, right? The I'll, house. <laughs> I'll, sp- I'll splice it in. Yeah, absolutely. And that is one of the things that I personally love about house. You know, Liza, I'd like to go back in time here because I have your uh, your LinkedIn profile pulled up here and you have this, this incredible resume. And I'd like to tell our, our listeners a little bit about kind of your background because you've done some very, very interesting things in the past. And I'm sure we could learn something from that. It looks like you graduated from uh, from Berkeley and then the Kellogg School of Management. I did, yes. Um, I went to Cal. Uh, I was, grew up in Los Angeles, so believe it or not, moving to Northern California was actually uh, getting seasons <laughs> compared to Southern California. Mm. Um, but uh, I majored in rhetoric, and uh, it's actually quite a large department at Cal. Surprisingly, they even have a graduate department in it. And most people go on to law school. I thought I was going to be an attorney, uh, like many people in my family. Um, but pretty much knew by graduation that I didn't want to go to law school. Um, but it was a really incredible major because it's all about how do you craft an effective message depending on your audience and the medium, right? If you're depending on who you're talking to, right, you're going to, you may. Pick, pick different words, right, or deliver it in a different way. Wait, what, what makes a Martin Luther King speech effective or a Nike advertisement effective or even blues music? Um, and it's really about, you know, the choice of, of both the words um, and the delivery. Uh, and so I ended up going into advertising for a few years and working for some big brands and uh, then went back to business school, as you mentioned, uh, and then became a management consultant for a few years working for both large package good companies and technology companies at the time like AT&T and Lucent. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was kind of my, my early formative working career was uh, working for larger, larger corporations uh, in, in a more structured role. Uh, and then in, in about 1998 when uh, the dot-com boom started happening, pretty much everyone at my consulting firm left uh, to go work at a dot-com. And that's when I made the switch to digital internet as well. The first startup I worked at was a home improvement e-tailer that eventually became walmart.com. And that was kind of my first foray into into the world of home improvement. Um, Mm. So with Hows, it's kind of coming full circle. Um, But since then, you know, I I would say I've, I've pretty much worked at internet startups building and scaling them from smaller to larger companies, both B2B marketing as well as uh, uh, consumer internet companies. But House has absolutely been the most fun by far. Wow. What what makes it the most fun? Um, Gosh, I think the impact that we're having on the world, you know, it's one thing to work for an advertising company and, and help a business, you know, help a large company grow. I think here, uh, I get to help lots of small businesses grow and be more successful, and it's just more personally rewarding. Um, and then just you know being able to talk to your friends or even my parents' friends, everybody's using Hows. It's for everybody. It's made their lives easier, and that's just more fun and, and more exciting and more rewarding overall. And who else is on the management team at Hows? Who are your colleagues? Um, well, really, you know, the, the company is run and driven by our founders who are still the CEO and president. Um, I don't know if you know, but our CEO is a woman, and that's a, uh, an unusual situation in Silicon Valley unto itself and a terrific one. Um, so Adita Tarko is our CEO, and Alon Cohen, her husband, um, who's sort of the technology technologist of the pair, uh, is our president. Um, and they're really driving the direction of the company. Um, but I have really great colleagues on the editorial side, uh, on the business side, on the sales side. Um, I think we really look for people that are smart and humble and are really focused on the mission of the company uh, rather than building a, you know, their own personal brand. And, and that makes it fun to work with them. And so what did you, what is, how do you, your duties, Liza, give us a, just an idea of what you do on a day to day in the, in the company. 
Uh, I would say, you know, there, there is no, there is no same day twice. Um, but if I was going to talk about what I do overall, you know, my, my, my goals are around, you know, bringing more uh, of the trade uh, and the design community onto house, right, the professional side. So how do I make sure that every architect is aware of house as a tool and, um, uh, and you know, comes on and, and joins the community? Uh, the second piece is once they join, you know, how do I make sure that they're aware of everything that's available to them and, and are actually using it and getting benefit from the platform? Um, and then the third area, I think, is really just spending time um, sharing our knowledge with the community. So, you know, we do a lot of market research and our goal is not to become a for-profit, you know, data company. We want to take the data that we collect from the 30 million people using House every month and the, you know, 800,000 professionals around the world using House and, and how do we collect that and give it back to the community to empower them to make better decisions, for example. What are some of the interesting things that you've seen from the data i mean having like you said having the the access to that data 30 30 million did you say yes you know homeowners and and professionals interacting with the with the platform it's always impressed me that google one of the amazing things about google is the ability they have to see all this data and crunch numbers and see trends any interesting insights liza that you've you've been able to see based upon that maybe some counterintuitive things or um, counterintuitive is, is probably tough. Um, I think what we tend to see more are trends and kind of things that, that, um, ebb and flow, uh, and as opposed to, to, you know, I think the positioning of house is really about reflecting what's going on. What, what are people actually doing, right? We're not, uh, futurists out there saying, you know, here's what here's what the color of the year is going to be next year, or you know, here's where things are going um, in ten years. We're really able to reflect, hey, you know, here's actually what people are doing um, in their homes. I think, you know, from our most recent study, one of the one of the things that I think surprised me at the time, but makes sense um, in retrospect, is that when it comes to building or remodeling a home. Um, concerns about having a healthy home actually decrease as income increases. Uh, and I think, you know, the initial thought would be, well, you know, if you have a high income or you're well-educated, right, making sure that your home is a healthy one is going to be high on your list. Um, but it turns out to be a bit of the inverse where, you know, people who um, are less well-off I think are living day to day with more health hazards or are living next to health hazards or are more concerned about the materials uh, that are actually in their home. And so in terms of a top of mind concern, having a healthy home is more of a worry uh, for folks with lower incomes and you know, folks on the higher end just take it for granted that what's going into their home is going to be safe and healthy. Hmm. Interesting. And so how does that manifest itself? What are you seeing that tells that tells you that? Well, we actually asked um, in our most recent survey kind of what people's top considerations were when they're um, renovating, uh, renovating or decorating a home. Um, and that's kind of what we, we, what we saw for that particular metric. So, you know, when it comes, to, for example, home technology or technology in the home, right, that as a consideration goes up as income, crease, uh, as income increases. You know, resale value and ROI decreases, uh, as income goes up, because again, people are less concerned about having to make money as a result of the renovation. They're doing it to please themselves. They're you know spending whatever they want, and again, you know, um, as your income decreases, that becomes you know much more of a concern. So we saw that in this case just by specifically asking people the question of you know what's important to you. Okay, I, I have I've pulled up the your recent survey here, and I'm just going to pull up here to see the title of it. It's the the House and Home Overview of U.S. Renovation Custom Building and Decorating in 2014 that you sent me just before our interview today. And there's quite a lot of metrics in here. Shall we dive into this, Liza? And you can kind of sure. get some high-level takeaways yeah. from what you're seeing here? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, this is the fourth year that we've done this survey. Um, it's fun because we get responses from every country in the world, even principalities like Vatican City. Uh, the island of Vanuatu, I think, where they had a survivor one year. Um, and wow. so we had uh, 250,000 people, you know, took a 
45 question, you know, essentially 15 minute survey, um, which shows you, I think, how engaged the community really is. And we had a, a, over 170,000 responses in the U.S. Um, this report is U.S. specific and will be coming out in the next few weeks with Canada reports on the other countries and some global comparisons. Um, but just, you know, looking at some of the top level takeaways for the U.S., you know, one of the stories I think that's just been in the news lately is millennials and, you know, what makes them tick and what are their concerns and what are, they, what are we going to do about student loans. Um, our look at millennials is, you know, the millennials that are actually using house. Um, most of the millennials using house are homeowners. Um, and among that group, I think one of our interesting findings is that um, millennials are renovating uh, at the same rate as the rest of uh, the other generations that are older than they are. Um, they're a smaller group uh, than the other generations, millennial homeowners, uh, in number. Um, and the dollars that they spend on their renovations, obviously because they're younger and just starting off, is smaller. But in terms of that interest and having that same desire and sort of the American dream to own a home and renovate a home, we're seeing, seeing that to be consistent with boomers. Interesting. And how, how about the boomers? What, did your, what does the survey tell you about the boomer generation? Yep. So I think the boomer generation consistent with, I think, most of history is, you know, that's who's spending the most money on renovations uh, and custom homes. I think one of the things that we're seeing is that um, boomers are starting relatively young to think about aging in place uh, concerns and the things that they can do to their homes. Um, we looked specifically at uh, households that had a member who was 60 years or older. Uh, and I think we see a lot of folks in those groups um, keeping aging in place in mind when they're doing their renovations. So it's everything from where they're locating rooms to you know, widening walkways to putting in more accessible appliances in the kitchen um, and removing bathtubs, which is something that we I think we first found when we, we were looking specifically at our more qualitative bathroom renovation study about six months ago, and we saw that a lot of people, when they're renovating a master bath, were actually leaving out a bathtub, and then that number was, you know, somewhere north of 60% for, uh, for the boomer generations and, and older homeowners. Um, so, yeah, we see that people are starting to think about it earlier than ever. And I'm looking here at the uh, frequency of home-related activities among homeowners. We have uh, custom buildings at 4%. I see renovating is up here at 58% and decorating up at 63%. So am I reading this correctly that, you know, custom building is a very, very small portion of what people are getting built and doing, and renovating is by far the, the lion's share of the work that's going on? Sure, and I think, you know, obviously building a custom home is a, is a much uh, larger undertaking um, and accessible, right, to, <clears throat> excuse me, a smaller number of people than, than renovations. That renovation number includes, you know, everything from a complete remodel of the home, right, to doing a, a facelift in the facelift in the kitchen um, or updating a closet. So, you know, you've got a, a much wider range uh, of activities and renovation than you do in custom building. Um, but that 4% that four number is, is pretty large, right? You've got almost 1 in 20 people on house um, building a custom home, if you think about it that way. Um, and that's a, a pretty significant number when you think about how many people are using the site. Yeah, when you put it that way, it definitely does. And so we see here, uh, you've broken it down by geographical area. We see that Northeastern and Midwestern renovators are more active with interior remodels, and Western and Southern renovators, uh, re renovators are more active with outdoor projects. That's interesting. Yeah, I think that's probably weather related. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, it actually it comes out with the baby boomers too, and we asked. Uh, when we ask that generation if they're planning to stay in their home for the long run, uh, more folks in the West and the South, right, are working on their home and planning to, to stay there for the long haul than in the Northeast and the Midwest, where I think you, you get more, of more folks looking to retire somewhere warmer. Like I'm going to Arizona or Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> So from, from a high level, Liza, what, what is this, um, anything else that this survey is telling you that you find is interesting or is it's going to be affecting how house, you know, approaches the next five years? Um, 
You know, I think for house, what we're trying to do is provide people the information and tools they need, right, to be successful with these projects and the things to think about. Um, so for us, it certainly helps us think about content around healthy home and green building and making sure that we're providing this information. Um, one of the other things that we do in this study is gather information on what people are actually spending on custom home building and renovations. Um, and we've had a tool in the past uh, called the Real Cost Finder, which we're going to be kind of reworking and, and working our latest data uh, in there. We asked a lot more questions this year on project scope, um, really understanding well, when people said, I spent this on a renovation, what did that renovation consist of? Was it just a facelift or did they replace all the cabinets and appliances or did they do an addition? Um, and really, get, again, empowering people with more information about, okay, you know, I really need to think about how I'm going to budget for this because in my area, Here's the average that people spent for something similar in scope to what I'm doing. So it's really, again, about just taking this data and being able to give it back to people in a form that gives them, you know, better information for their own projects. Yeah, I could see how that would be very useful. Liza, is there any, have you come out with any fee information or cost, cost information? In the past? Um, not yet. In the past, we have. We have a tool called the Real Cost Finder where we've taken this data on what people have spent um, and you can put in any zip code and see kind of what, it, what did the top 5% spend, what did the average spend, what did the you know, bottom third, top third spend. Um, but now we're going to be updating that data with uh, more information on scope to really help people differentiate um, what's going on for their area and their project. Okay. Well, Liza, so right now it's, it's 2015. And House was founded in 2009. So, you know, been around for about six years. Yeah, we really say that it became a company in 2010. So our founders were kind of building it, you know, uh, in the evenings uh, uh, while they still had their full-time jobs in 2009. That's when the idea came around. But 2010 is when they were really convinced that, you know, gosh, there were plenty of people out there going through the same things that they were. Uh, and this would be valuable. And it's when they quit their jobs and decided to pursue it full time as a company. Interesting. And you came on board. How long have you been with House, Liza? I've been almost four years. I came on at the end of uh, 2011. Okay. All right. Because I, I was uh, looking here in Wikipedia and, you know, I'm not saying Wikipedia is right. But according to Wikipedia, it looks like in, in 2010, which is rather early, your the firm founders secured a two million dollars in first round funding, so they went they went out for funding at a very early stage. So actually, not you know the the great thing about houses because they were building it on the side, starting in two thousand nine on their own. The funding actually came to them because by two thousand ten, they had this amazing product that people from all over the country were saying, "Oh, can I use this?" And architects from across the country were saying, "Is this just for California? You know, how do we join?" Mm. Um, so instead of them going out and seeking financing, and, and at the beginning they were really like, hey, this is just our fun side project to help us through our own renovation and you know, great friends and family can use it. Um, but it took off, I think, beyond their, their wildest expectations, you know, bootstrapped with just their sweat equity in it. Um, so when 2010 rolled around and, and the, the money came looking for them, it was really because they'd already really built something substantive that had traction. Interesting. And let's see, it says that that was led by uh, Orange Capital is what it says here. It says he's currently, uh, Oren Zeev is currently on the House's board of directors. Is that still the case? Yes, that's the case. Okay. And then there was another series of rounds, $11.6 million and um, some investment from Sequoia Capital. Uh, I kind of follow the tech space, so these, these names are familiar, you know. And then in 2013, uh, Series C of $35 million. By Sequoia, some other um, uh, other investors. Twenty fourteen, one hundred sixty five million dollar financing round. Yep. Well, you know, a big a big portion of that has been to enable us to expand internationally mm. uh, and to really grow the way the way that we want to grow um, and not have to worry about it if we want to, you know, join another country very quickly and you know put teams in place and make sure we're really serving the communities there well. I gotcha. Well, it sounds like it sounds like the investors are seeing opportunity here. It sounds like they're they're putting their money because they believe in what house is doing. I think that's the nice part about our investors is they they really do believe in what house is doing, you know, almost all of them 
I think, approached our founders because they or their spouse was using Howes and, and absolutely mm. loved it. And so um, they're fans, uh, and, and that's important to us. But, you know, really they're, they give our founders and our team, right, the, the support we need, but it's really about what letting, letting us run, right, and, and focus on our mission and making sure that we're building something that's useful, right? The, the only reason it's been successful and the only way it will continue to be successful is if we're actually building tools that are helping people with their project, right? We don't want to have to right, pay to convince you that you should come to house, right? We, we want you to, to come and, and be told by your friend that, you know, this was an incredibly effective, useful tool for your remodel and made the process more fun, right, for you and your family. So, the only way we can do that is just to continue to focus on that as the mission. And so is that the mission of House? Yep. That's to make, make the process of, you know, building, remodeling, and design more fun and more productive for everybody involved, consumer and trade. Well, Liza, thank you for letting us get to know you better. And now it's a great place to segue over into House itself on the platform. Uh, you know, you're talking about sure. how it's helpful. Let's talk a little bit about that. I kind of joked at the beginning, I guess it would be last episode because I usually split these but I joke that, you know, if you haven't heard of House, you're living under a rock. Uh, to be fair, there probably are listeners who are listening today that don't know about House because they might be focused on the commercial sector or even if they are residential architects, they might not know a whole lot about it. So could you give us an overview of, of what House is and how it helps architects and designers and uh, remodeling and contractors and decorators? Absolutely. Yep. So we talk about House as a platform for building, remodeling, and design, um, and that's because people use it as a tool, right? It, it enables you to get things done. Um, but it, it's a website and a mobile app. Um, you can go to house.com or you can go to any of the app stores for Android uh, uh, or iOS um, and download the apps for phone or for tablets. Um, we have one of the most popular uh, iOS apps out there, I think it's one of four non-gaming apps that has wow! You know, congratulations, more than, thanks more than three hundred thousand five-star reviews, and you know I, I think one of the fun ways to see the the value that House provides to the trade community is to go in and read you know what people are writing about the app and and how it's helping them. It's one of the ways that we do some market research ourselves, um, but it's really uh, it's really there to help people um, get ideas, uh, better communicate. Uh, with each other uh, and with their professionals about what they want, um, get inspired. So find find not only you know ideas for you know rooms or exteriors or spaces that interest them, but but products as well. Um, and not only consumers but the trade. Right, it's not so easy for folks to visit a showroom or see what manufacturers have going all the time. And so we hear from architects frequently that they use house as just an image search, right? It, what's that last mailbox detail or roof detail or gutter detail or something that they need, they'll, they'll find it there. Um, we have a ways for people to get smart. So we publish uh, all unique proprietary content um, written by experts uh, in the community. So we have many architects on house that contribute uh, to our editorial, and so we publish everything from house tours to, you know, how to hire an architect uh, and everything in between, um, anything that a homeowner could possibly need help with, and, and advice and articles for professionals, too. Um, we provide support in our forum, so we have an advice area, um, and consumers go in and post their design dilemmas, and they get answers from both other homeowners in the community or people in the community who've been through it before, right? It's really great to go in and say, you know, gosh, I'm remodeling my kitchen. Should I put in an under-counter microwave for my kids? Do you have one? What do you think about it? And actually, you know, hear from people who've been living with, uh, living with something similar. Um, and they can also get, get answers from professionals in the community. Uh, and that's um, a great way for architects and, and other professionals, um, not only to get kind of better insights into what are the challenges that lay people have, uh, you know, uh, it helps them better understand what's, what are the challenges people have, how do they think about it, how do they articulate them, um, but also build their, own, build their own brands and really kind of showcase their personality um, and I think build the brand for their profession too. So we hear all the time about how you know, when architects participate in discussions or designers participate in discussions, right, you're now showing the consumer community the value that your profession provides, the, right, the knowledge that you have, the value that you add, and, and that goes a long way to helping people better understand why they should hire a professional for their project. Um, 
and and I would just say then so the and the final layer and when we 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 launched relatively recently um, is products. We've always had a lot of products on house, but you can now buy them uh, in our house marketplace directly from house. And it was kind of uh, the big missing piece. We had uh, if you've ever seen the green tags when you use the house cider app, kind of identifying what's in the photo. It's one of the most popular features, and now. Um, People said to us, you know, this is great. I can find out what this product is, but now I want to buy it. Can you make that even easier for me? So we added the marketplace to help people actually find really great and unique products. And I think, you know, one of the fun, surprising things there is that people aren't just buying throw pillows. They're buying bathtubs and tile and, you know, fundamental remodeling <laughs> fixtures and, and features. And I found that really surprising. Interesting. Fascinating. Um my mind is, there's a lot going on here, Liza. You guys are doing so much. It's pretty, pretty dang impressive. Um, you know, opening, a, having an e-commerce platform on house. I, I'm guessing that your background was probably useful in that. Um, no, I, uh, you know, I, I haven't really been involved in the e-commerce piece um, as much. Uh, my background is less e-commerce and, and more kind of just digital marketing, um, community building. Uh, but you know, the whole point of having these five layers and we kind of talk about houses of Wikipedia, right? The things that characterize Wikipedia is that, um, you have the community contributing to the content, right? Not only do we write articles, people comment and they link to other things, but on Wikipedia, all the content is interlinked, right? And so the only way that these sort of five different layers of what house provides become useful are if they're truly interlinked. And so we do all work together as a team to make yep. sure that we're connecting the pieces, right? Otherwise, you've just got things living in different silos and it's difficult to use. And right, there are plenty of sites out there that are just commerce or just content or just directories, right? And, and House is really the first that put all of these layers together and actually connected them and used technology uh, the way that technology is meant to be used and using the internet the way it's meant to be used. Interesting. So, um, yeah, House is not a public company, right? It's privately owned? That's correct. Okay. Is there any talk about a, a public offering? No, we're just focused on, right, building the, the most useful tool we possibly can. Not something we really talk about. Gotcha. Um, with So if someone to buy some of these, because this is, I, I just, okay, so if someone wanted to buy something off of House, I, you have appliances on here, you have furniture, all sorts of things. Um, is this is shipped to their home? Yes, it is. Okay, great. And then out of all those five layers that you talked about, which would you say is the most active or the most well-developed or sort of the core backbone of what, what houses is all about? Gosh, you know, I would have to say two areas for me, um, which, and only because that's where we started and, and it's so fundamental, but it's... Um, and they're interlinked. The photos, right? The the inspiration, right? The the, the basis for all the visual communication we do, um, and our professional community, because every photo on house really was uploaded by one of the professionals, an architect, a designer, a landscaper, right? Someone in our community who is showcasing their portfolio on house, um, and that's really, you know, from the beginning been what's so incredibly powerful, the discovery piece, right? Being able to use visuals for communications, right? When you say, what's a Hampton's kitchen? Boy, it would be so much easier if I could just show you a picture. We'd be on the same page in an instant. And that's exactly what happens between uh, homeowners and their families and homeowners and their professionals. Um, so really having, having the homeowners and the professionals together uh, in that same community and giving them the tools to communicate and collaborate is really, I think, the cracks okay. at this point. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the Hampton Kitchen images now. <laughs> so uh, that's great. Was I right? I hope. You're right. You're right. Uh, you know, Liza and I, I mean, my wife and I found this incredibly useful for our own, our own remodel. You know, we're currently doing a remodel on our kitchen. And just like everyone else uses house, finding it very useful to search, for instance, wall cabinets and see, you know, the myriads of different options for how architects and designers have done wall cabinets or island designs, etc. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. If you enjoy listening to podcasts, one of the best ways that I found to grow professionally and personally without spending a lot of time studying is by listening to audiobooks. 
I can't stress enough how much this has helped me. I probably listen to at least one audiobook each week, if not more. I listen to them when I'm at the gym, driving around town, or when I'm just out walking. I like to call books a decade in a day because in a few hours you can absorb the best lessons and information that an author has spent years accumulating. Don't learn things the slow way through experience in the School of Hard Knocks. Take a shortcut and learn from the world's best experts right out of books. Today, you have the knowledge of the world at your fingertips. Your potential is practically limitless. Now, I get my audiobooks downloaded straight from my phone from Audible, which is affiliated with Amazon. And the cool thing is that it remembers where I left off no matter which device I left off on. You can get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial to Audible and support this show by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash book. I can't recommend it enough. Try it out. It very well may change your life. Also, please go to iTunes and leave a review for the show. There are two reasons to do this. First, it encourages me to continue making free content for you to run a fulfilling and profitable practice. And secondly, it allows others to find this content inside of iTunes so that they can benefit as well. For free resources for running an architecture practice that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the join button to unlock your account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, boost profitability, start a firm, and much more. Until next week, this has been the Business of architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.